right now you're working on the delivery of the persuasive speech. Most of you have already finished your outlines. You've got those submitted. You've got to complete on it. A couple of you still maybe working on smoothing out your transitions, getting your source citations so they are complete. But for most of you, right now, you're working on the delivery of your persuasive speech. And that speech is due at the end of the week on Friday. And I really encourage you to use the entire week to practice your speech. And again, you want to be practicing your speech out loud three times a day, every day. And you just want to try to become less and less dependent on the outline. So the more that you're looking up and delivering your speech, instead of looking down and reading the speech, the better you're doing as far as retaining that information. So you're working on the delivery of the persuasive speech, and I've covered a lot of those delivery techniques in detail in past lectures. But the big thing you want to remember in your presentation, you want to make sure that your eyes are on the camera at least 50% of the time. Boy, for some of you, it'd be nice to see you even get up to 75%. That would be really, really cool. And you want to make sure that you have a nice conversational delivery style. So you sound like you're having a conversation with the audience. And even if your eye contact is good, right, you can still have it set up so you're reading your speech. And I don't mind as long as I can't tell. But if your eyes are on the camera, but you're delivering, and now for my next point, I will focus on, and some of you can even see your eyes going back and forth as you're reading, right? That's not going to cut it. So you've got to have a nice conversational delivery so it sounds like you're just conversing with the audience instead of reading to the audience. You all know that this class is the introduction to public speaking, not the introduction to public reading. And most of you did a really good job with your deliveries of the informative speech. It was evident that a lot of you put some practice time in. And it's real easy to tell when I'm watching a speech who practiced and who didn't. So make sure you're putting in the practice time. Good rule to follow is always practice the speech out loud 10 times before you actually give the presentation. And also, too, some of you, I know you just kind of get your speech down and then you just keep recording and re-recording and re-recording until you get it right. I think you're better off just practicing your speech every day, three times a day, about 20 minutes a day, going over your speech, working on different aspects of the delivery. Do that for a good week, then go ahead and record your speech. And if you do that, that's a little bit more realistic, right? Because if we were in the classroom, it would be that you would get up there, just you know, start your speech. Oh, it screwed up and it's starting it now. Once you want you to, there's no timeouts in public speaking. So if we were doing this for real, once you start, you have to keep going all the way through to the end. I'd like to see you emulate that when you're presenting your speeches remotely as well. But you want to make sure that you're practicing so you can have a nice, effective delivery. And I want you to treat your delivery of the persuasive speech. In essence, that's really your final exam, right? You'll still do a little farewell speech. And I'll cover that in detail in the last lecture next week. You'll do that at the end in that final week. But that's, a, that's really a lot like your introductory video, just a short speech. You're telling us what you liked about the class, what you learned, and how you met your goals. So the persuasive speech, that's your last big delivery. And so I want you to demonstrate in that speech that if you want an A in the class, you should demonstrate that with an A delivery. That means eyes on the camera, nice conversation. And for some of you, you just need to pick up the energy level a little bit more. And a good way to do that is just get your hands more involved. Usually, the more that you're gesturing, the more energetic you're going to be when you're speaking. And then you just want to make sure that your gestures are below your shoulders so you're not getting your hands up in your face. Okay? So you're working hard on those persuasive speeches. I can't wait to see the deliveries. And boy, good job on the topic selection. We have a wide range of really good persuasive appeals. I'm really looking forward to this last round of what I call academic speeches. Academic speeches are any presentations where you're utilizing research into the actual speech. And then the third thing I want to mention is 
for the most part, all of you are doing a pretty good job on the research, but some of you are struggling with finding sources, and that depends on the topic, right? You know, it's just sometimes you're going to have topics where it's easier to find information, and that's why I suggest that when initially selecting a topic, you always want to consider the availability of information and research, because what you don't want to do is something you kind of found yourself in this position. You got your topic set, you got it approved. Now, when you're trying to find the research, it's hard to come by. So you want to make sure, and I hope you learn that in this class, that one of the keys to being an effective speaker is to know how to do college level research and how to incorporate that research into the flow of a speech by being able to actually cite your sources as you're moving through and navigating through your overall speech. A lot of you though, you just, you rely on websites to do your research and you just, you don't want to do that in college. And I get it. Look, you know, we're so used to, okay, Google it, right? Trying to find what time the movie starts, trying to find the location of the restaurant, want to get directions here. Cool. You can go to Google for that information, but you don't want to rely on the internet or you don't want to rely on websites for doing college level research. And you should only look at websites as a last resort. And the reason why is it's much harder to get information published either through a book, a magazine, a periodical, a journal, you know, even if it's a documentary, right? It's harder to get your information out there and it's got to go through more hoops, it's going to be scrutinized more if the information is published. Anybody can put anything on a website. So that's why with the live, I've really been encouraging you, you want to use published sources first. That should always be your go-to for doing college level research. Only utilize websites as a last resort. But I also understand for a lot of you, you're just not familiar with using college database search engines. And so it makes it kind of a daunting task to do college level research. So to make that easier, if, and I mentioned this before, if you've never worked with a reference librarian at the school that you're attending, then you want to make sure you do that before you leave Solano. You want to learn and make sure that you've mastered doing college level research, utilizing academic search engines and databases before you transfer to a university. So what I recommend is get familiar with the virtual library that you have access to as a result of you being a student at Solano Community College and you have access to all kinds of databases for free. In fact, Let's go to the Solana website. Let me show you how to utilize the virtual library and how to set up an appointment with a reference library. Let's go to the website now. All right, so now you can see we are on the Solano Community College webpage. We're going to go up here, we're going to click on academics, and then we're going to drop down here to resources all the way at the bottom, and we're going to click on library. That's going to take us to the library webpage. And then we, once we get to the library webpage, we're going to scroll over here on the left-hand links. We're going to find the virtual library. You're going to click on that. And then right here, if you just go to research support, click on that once we're in the virtual library. And then right here in the middle, ask your librarian. If you're having trouble doing research, you can ask the librarian. In fact, for the persuasive assignment, you could have gone right here and just put your name, your email address in, start the chat and just say, I'm in POF's public speaking class. I'm doing a speech on, tell them your topic. And I wanna find the best possible sources that are published for this particular topic. They'll give you directions and show you how to use the different databases. And if it's too hard doing it during chat, you can actually set up a Zoom meeting, a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with a reference librarian. And in about 15 minutes, they can show you not only how to find the information for the particular topic of your speech or paper in the future, 
but they'll also show you all the available database systems. I mean, there's over 30 different database systems that you can use. For example, ProQuest, great database search engine that gives you access to just about every newspaper, not only in the United States, but in the world. So you have access to all that information. And so it's much easier to rely on published sources when you're doing college level research instead of getting information from the web websites. But typically students go to the websites first because that's where you're used to, right? You're trying to find a place to eat, what time the movie's at. You go to Google, you put in a search, but that doesn't work for college level research because when you do a search on Google, it doesn't guarantee that all the hits that you'll get will be information that you can use because there's no guarantee the information is published. That's why you want to do all of your research through a college library database system because you're guaranteed that the information is published. You'll always be able to know the title of the publication, the author, and the date if you only use published information. The key is early in your college career, you want to learn how to navigate all of the database systems so it becomes second nature. So if you've never worked with a librarian or a reference librarian, and the difference is a reference librarian, their job is to help you do research. That's why they work at the college. They're there to help students get their research. And you can just set up a Zoom research session right here with the reference librarian they can show you how to utilize all of the database systems, how to navigate the virtual library. And the cool thing is when you transfer to another school, let's say you go from here to Sac State or San Francisco State, or you go to UC Davis, you go to Berkeley, maybe you go down to San Diego, San Diego State. All of the universities, for the most part, use the same database system. So you learn how to use EBSCOhost, ProQuest, Google Scholar in the virtual library at Solano, you'll be able to find those same database systems wherever you end up transferring and completing your college education. So you'll want to learn how to, how to use the virtual library for doing college level research. If you spend 15 minutes with the reference librarian just learning how to navigate the database systems, that will save you literally thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of time because what you'll find as you work your way up the academic ladder you're going to take less tests but you're going to write more papers you're going to give more oral presentations and both of those once you transfer to the university and then if you continue on get a master's degree go on to a phd just the papers get longer and longer and longer you're going to have to use more and more research so use your college career or use your college career on the community college level to learn how to do college level research so that by the time you transfer, you're good to go as far as doing college level research. All right. So the last thing I want to mention today, and I'm hoping that everybody's goal is to get an A in the class. And I want to give you an A. I want you to be as successful as possible and kind of I look at my job as I'm here to try to get you to that finish line with the highest grade possible. But in order to get an A in this class, first, you've got to make sure that you've met each of your three goals for the semester. And you probably want to take a look at those goals so you know exactly what they are. And as much as possible, you want to demonstrate that you're meeting those goals when you do your final presentation of the persuasive speech, like if one of your goals, I want to be more comfortable and confident when I'm speaking. So you want to make sure that you have a confident delivery style when you're presenting your persuasive speech, right? That evidence that you have met your actual goal. So you want to make sure that you have met your three goals. And then you also want to make sure that you're meeting the student learning objectives that I've established for the class. And really, I'll just kind of make that even easier. Here's what I'm looking for in that final presentation in order to give you an A for the class. You've met your goals, but in that final presentation, 
you demonstrate, you understand the importance of practice when it comes to public speaking. In fact, if you just learn that, if you learn that, look, public speaking is just a matter of writing a speech and then putting in the work to learn the speech so that I can deliver the information. So I have a high degree of eye contact. I have a lot of energy and enthusiasm for the topic that I'm speaking about. And I have a nice conversational engaging delivery style. And if I can do that, I'm going to be an excellent speaker. And that all comes through practice. So I want you to understand the importance of practice, that the reason why people get so nervous when they speak in public is usually because they aren't fully prepared. And so you put in the preparation, that's going to give you more confidence. That confidence is going to make you a better speaker. I want to see that demonstrated. So good deliveries of the final persuasive speech, that's a big step in the right direction in terms of getting an A in the class. And then second, and this is real important to me because I know you'll do a lot of this, especially once you transfer to the university. I want to make sure that you know how to put a proper speech outline together. And I'll even say a proper academic speech outline. And what I mean by that is you know how to incorporate sources into the flow of the speech. You understand that when you're giving a speech, you don't have footnotes that you refer to, right? The audience doesn't have access to any hyperlinks. And you don't want to end your speech with a work cited. So you've got to learn how to incorporate the source citations into the flow of the speech. You've got to demonstrate that you know the three elements of the source citation, title of the publication or name of the website, author, and day. So you've got to make sure that you've got the source citations down and your transitions are smooth, they're clean, the preview, the summary at the end, all of those structural components are set. So to get an A in the class, good delivery of the speech, but also your outline has to be perfect in terms of it's formatted correctly, you have everything where it goes, and your source citations are inserted into the outline properly, and you also have very clear, well-written transition. So, to get an A in the class, meet your three goals, at least 50% eye contact with the presentation of the persuasive speech, and you've demonstrated you know how to put an academic outline together, and we'll use that last outline, the one you put together for the persuasive speech, to make that determination, okay? So I'm trying to make it real clear. If you want an A in the class, here's what you need to get done. Also, too, be mindful of your hours on Canvas. And kind of the deal is, if you turn in all of your work, you get completes on all of your work and everything is done properly and correctly, I don't even take a peek at the number of hours you spent on Canvas. I mean, obviously, you've done the work correctly. You've had access to the information. You've followed directions well. But if you're kind of struggling with the presentation or still unsure of how to put together a quality outline, and then I take a peek, at your hours, and I see 10 hours, 12 hours, even 20 hours. Well, that tells me you haven't utilized all of the available instruction. And it's pretty easy, easy to tell anyway. When I'm grading your outlines, I can tell who's going through all the information, who's watched the instructional videos, who's looking at the sample outlines, and who's not. So you want to make sure that you're really putting the time necessary into the class this summer so that you have access to all of the instructional material. So you want to make sure if your work's been a little sketchy, the higher up your hours on Canvas, at least that tells me that the effort has been there, it's just been a problem with execution. But if you're not doing your work right and your hours in Canvas are low, you're not going to be happy with your final grade. All right? Give me your best effort on this last persuasive delivery. And I tell you what, you do a really good job on that final presentation. Even if you jacked up some of your presentations before then, it's all about how you finish, baby. So let's see good deliveries with that persuasive speech and do that. 
you're going to be successful in the class. All right. Work hard. I want to see great deliveries. Right? And boy, some of, not some of you, all of you have so much talent and ability. I want to see that all come out in the last week. I want to see the best public speaker you can possibly be in that final presentation. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Greg Paw, director of the Solano College Sports Broadcasting Program, and we're here in the TV studio at Solano Community College, and I'd like to tell you about a great opportunity this summer. Now, typically with our summer class, we're covering sports because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're opening up the class to all of you podcasters, YouTube influencers, to give you a chance to come in and create content that we can show on YouTube. You can have your own podcast. We can even put you on channel 28 locally. Let's take a look at some of the equipment we have here in the studio. Come on. All right, we're here in the Solano College Sports Network studio control room to show you some of the equipment that you can use as a student here at Solano Community College. And the first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the production unit system that we use. It's made by New Tech, it's the TriCaster system. This system is used by every major network. So you come to Solano Community College, you're going to learn video production on the TriCaster unit so you'll be ready to go once you leave our program. You'll be trained on the same equipment that you would use in all of the major networks. You see the video production board here. We've got our speakers set up here. Here we've got our interface that you can use. So all kinds of equipment that you can use to be a professional in media production. Another great feature of our video production system, you'll be able to get training on the Allen and Heath audio board where you will learn the trade secrets for both radio and TV production. Here in the video editing suite you will have access to Adobe Premiere and the entire creative cloud. If you can imagine it, you can create it right here in the Solano Community College TV studio. We have merged with Fairfield Cable Access and that gives you the opportunity to use the same TV equipment that they use to produce their shows on local TV here in Fairfield and that gives you the chance to also show your work on local TV.